going to do is we're going to evaluate each, each expression. So you remember we have a variable. What variables uh, represent is our unknown. We usually don't know what a variable represents. And when I say, you know, 3 times, um, you know, x equals 12, well, obviously we know that answer. We know x is going to equal uh, 4. But the reason why we use x is because we don't, you know, if we want to say, pretend that we don't know what the value of x is, and where we don't know the value of a number, we use a variable. And what we're going to do now is we have an expression. See here, I have b minus c. I don't know, or what this is, this is the difference between one number and the difference of another number. I don't know what these numbers are or what, they, or what these two are representing. So therefore, this is just an expression of one number subtracted from another number. Now, what we're going to do is evaluate. What we're going to do is we're going to give our variables value. And that's what we're doing when you evaluate. You're giving your variable a value so you can actually figure out what the value is of your expression. So if I say b minus c, right now that means nothing. That means some number minus another number, if that's what I want b and c to represent. b and c are their variables. They can represent, they don't have to represent numbers. They can represent really anything. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to give them values. And when I'm plugging them in values, I'm going to put them in parentheses so you guys will know that I'm evaluate, I'm plugging in that value in for that variable. So if I say b is equal to 4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses 4 minus, what is my value of c? Negative 3. So what you're going to do is you take each of your values that you were given and you plug them into your expression. Well, here I have a double negative. So 4 minus a negative is the same thing as 4 plus, And therefore, my value is going to equal 7. Here I have an absolute value function. Again, the same rules apply. A is negative 7 minus D, which is 5. And I just like to um, put them in parentheses just so we know that I plugged in negative 7 for A and 5 in for D. So I have negative 7 minus 5 is a negative 12. And remember, the absolute value of a negative number is always going to give you a positive value. Um, I know it was 12. And the way I like to look at that, guys, is if I said 2 to my left was negative and 2 to my right was positive, if I go one step to the right, I would say I went positive one step, right? I traveled one step. If I go one step to my left, I again, I've traveled one step. It was in the direction of negative, but I still traveled, moved one step. So that's why it's always... Think of absolute value as always like distance, all right? Um, again, now here I have b mi minus a divided by 2. b is 4 minus a, which is a negative 7, all over 2. And again, guys, this is helpful because when you put them in parentheses, you notice that, oh, this is a double negative. So it's going to be 4 plus 11 divided by 2, which is 15 divided by 2, which I'm going to leave as a fraction. All right, I'm not going to put that as 7.5. I like to leave it as a fraction. And then, holy crap, <laughs> we go from here and we go all the way to here, which is extremely confusing. But if you guys can just remember what I talked about, just take your values of your numbers and plug them in. And we'll worry about the rest of it in a second. A is negative 7. Minus b, which is 4. Square that. Plus c, which is a negative 3. Minus d, which is a 5. Close parentheses. Okay. Now, one thing you need to remember is PEMDAS, or Rules of Order of Operations. So I have all these values. Remember, when doing PEMDAS, you always want to do what's inside the innermost parentheses first. So here I have negative 7 minus 4. Well, negative 7 minus 4 is going to give me negative 11. And then I'm going to square that, plus a negative 3 minus 5 is going to give me a negative 8. All right, 11, negative 11 squared is going to give me a positive 121, plus a uh, Negative 8 times negative 8 is a positive 64. Then I still can combine these under my root, and I'm going to get 185. Now, um, 
lot of times you might want to simplify um, with that or see if you can take the square root of 185, which um, I know you cannot take the square root of 185, so you might have to simplify that. But um, for time purposes and for this problem, I just want an example going over evaluating each expression. And once you guys look at this is, um, just make sure whenever you find the value of a variable, you just plug in that value into the variable to solve. 